Hello and welcome to Immortal Behaviour for this week. There are many ways to win a game. Get your team home as a halfback. He won the game with his kick and go. Andrew kicks back and across. It has been a freakish kick by Andrew John. I thought he'd maybe retire, but oh, forgive me, Father, for I have said. Maybe God has come to marathon. Welcome to another episode of Immortal Behaviour. Joey, great to see you. Afternoon. How's your week been? It's been good. Yeah. It's been good. Low key. Goes quick. Yeah. Goes quick. Flies Freddy by. Ready the 8th. Yeah. Thursday night footy. Yeah. Oh. Highlight, a highlight of the week so far? Oh, um, today. I love Immortal <laughs> Behaviour. <laughs> All right, let's get highlight stuck into... Is tonight's game. Thursday night's at Allianz. So it's yes. Home game. Yes. Home quick. Yep, got some good games over the weekend. We'll talk a little mm. bit about that later on in the show. Um, but some news this week, yesterday, James Fisher-Harris uh, dropped a pretty big bombshell. So he's off to the pretty Warriors, um, leaving the Penrith Panthers, which is a huge, huge loss for, for Penrith. But it's a four-year deal that he's signing uh, with the Warriors. How big of a signing is this for the Warriors and how big of a loss is this for Penrith? Well, I've just been thinking in the last five minutes how big a signing it is. I'm trying to go over the history of uh, the Warriors, some of the biggest signings they've had. This has got to be right up there. With them early days, they signed John Kerwin, who was an All Blacks legend, but John was right at the end of his career. That, that was big news. And they've signed, they signed some Englishmen, but I've got to say, this, this would probably top them all. Yeah, arguably this would be up there with the, mm -hmm. the biggest. It's you consider his uh, status in the game, without doubt the number one prop in the game, New Zealand captain, who thumped Australia last Test match, biggest margin ever. Mm. So it uh, yeah, it is huge, huge, huge. And obviously, because the the Warriors are losing Adam Fanil Blake, Adam, yeah. So it, this is it's a like for like mm. really, and you got to. Well, then it's, you know, who's better out of them two? It's a photo finish. It's big, big news. Mm. It's great for New Zealand. It's great for rugby league. What about for Penrith? Yeah. This just adds to a number of players. The, the list gone. of, yeah. yeah. Um, Jerome Luai is obviously leaving. Um, kick out Crichton. Kick out Crichton. But not only that, if it, we talk about their, their huge players, the, the most high profile kick out, Spencer Linu, Crichton, these sort of players. But then. Have a look at the fringe players. Wade Egan was there mm. years ago. Jermaine Hopgood, who's killing it. Mm. Parramatta, he was there. Tom Jenkins was there at Newcastle, uh, now at Newcastle. Charlie Staines scored four tries on Deville. He's at the Tigers. So not only are they losing their high-end players, they're also losing their depth. It's just not fair. Mm. Simple as that. It's just not fair. Um, there is no real reward for for producing your own players. Uh, I think there should be some dispensation for local juniors or juniors who have been in the club, you know, whatever it is, eight, ten years. Mm. Fisher Harris has been over in Australia since he's been a young man, 17, 18. All that work um, they put in him, Spencer Linu, for instance, Stephen Crichton, for instance, local juniors, have been in the system since they've been 15, 16. So I really feel for, for Penrith. If you look at their team when they won the comp three three years ago, four years ago, if they kept that team, you're talking about with luck with injury, they could have won six in a row. But then is then is then that a good sign that they actually that salary cap well, there's pressures? Arguments for four and against, mm. but they shouldn't be punished for identifying their special juniors and putting a heap of work into them, getting them up to that level. Um, yeah, it, it'd be tough because they've lost so many players, so many players. But then do you, yeah, do you look at it the other way, saying that you actually want the talent spread out throughout the game because you don't want just yeah, one team? Yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a hard one. Mm. I just feel for it. I feel for Penrith, for sure. And those places with big nurseries where they lose the players, they develop. What did you make of uh, how it all unfolded? So uh, James Fisher Harris uh, requested um, an early release based on um, some family issues mm. to, to head back to New Zealand. Funeral? Was his grandfather's? Or yeah, I'm not entirely Hang sure. On, no, yeah, I shouldn't say that. I'm just guessing. Um, yeah, I understand. He went back for a funeral and then obviously got back amongst his family. And um, yeah, the New Zealand boys. The I say this wrong all the time. Maldi. 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 
Uh, family's huge for that for those guys. Um, so getting back amongst family, I'm, I'm sure he just said, you know what, this is where I, I'm from. I want to bring my kids up here. I want to get back to where I'm from. Um, but the duel's done pretty quick. <laughs> Half the luck, just move on. Mm. Yeah. You can, can you understand it from um, from a player's perspective, especially yeah. a player who's um, come over to a, another country, mm. even for, for players that are playing far away from where they've grown up? Do you yeah. understand? Can yeah. you s sympathise a little bit with them totally. for it? Mm. Totally. I, guess I get terribly homesick. Mm. I would hate to be away from home you know, ex for an extended time. But um, What's the drive from Cessnock to McDonald Jones Stadium? Uh, that's about... Well, it used to be an hour. Now it's about 40 minutes for the new Hunter Valley Expressway. Yeah. You weren't you? Didn't you get really homesick when you were travelling? Uh, was it with the kangaroos? Yeah. And <laughs> and did you have ben to have... Kennedy used to come and cuddle me. Go get BK, <laughs> needs to cuddle him. He's got to crying again. I hate being away from home. Anyway. Move on. Did you? Wasn't there one? And you, did your brother come and sleep in the in oh, the room yeah. with you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> when was that? I don't know. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So if you're Penrith, obviously yeah. you've got um, money to splash. Who do mm. you spend it on? Do you look at signing up Taruva? No, mm. I wouldn't be spending all that money on uh, Taruva. Um, they need to buy a, a play one front rower. Uh, and off the top of my head, the two that come to mind are Nelson. I know he's on contract, under contract at Melbourne, but um, I don't know whether he's out of favour or he's not, you know, he wants to get out. So Nelson's one option, and the other one is Stefano. You took him on, You took him on, Big Stefano. I understand he's got a clause or something in his contract. If the Tigers don't make the eight this year, he can look elsewhere. Interesting. Well, the fact that you say um, Nelson, yeah. because he he only he was playing the first what six weeks of yeah. the comp in um, in New South, Wales Cup. New South Wales Cup. He yeah. was playing for North Sydney so Bears. So he gets to start tonight. But the, or whether they go to England, if we ever look at the last ten years, the the front rowers from England, Sam Burgess, James Graham, you know the guys down at, at uh, Canberra, all those front rowers. Um, Maybe they go over there by one of the big pommy front rowers. But the ones that come to mind are Big Stefano, probably that one, because the Tigers, the way they played last week at Campbelltown, they'll struggle to make the eight. Or Nelson. Mm. But you've got to buy a front rower. I don't know. Like the young guys coming through there who, who are coming off the bench, Lindsay Smith and these guys, they look really good, honest players. But you need that play one mm. front rower who's mm. just going Whack. Some of the new, some of the new guys they've got, they're, they're quite young. They're big boys on, the, young, on the bench. Yeah. Liam Henry. Yeah. Well, the they're, they're the ones I'm talking about. They look really good players, but they're not play one front rowers yet. The big blokes where you just give them the ball and they go whack. Mm. And there's only a handful out there. Look, Spencer would have been the one. Spencer Lee knew he was the next one to get in there, but unfortunately, once again, local junior, they lose him. Mm. What does this move tell you about the Warriors? The fact that a, a player of um, James's, you know, calibre in the game, mm. that's the fact that he wants to go and play for the Warriors, leaving the club that has just won the last few years. Huge, absolutely huge. I, I think if you look back probably 20 years ago, there, there was some of the most amazing Kiwi juniors who came to Australia, and the, and the one I'm probably thinking about is Sonny Bill Williams. Like you would have been able to identify Sonny as a young man, and, uh, but for whatever reason, he wanted to come to Australia, didn't want to, get, or didn't want to stay in New Zealand with the Warriors. I think that's changed now under Andrew Webster. He, uh, he must be doing a great job there. But also, I, I think James Fisher-Harris has a great relationship with Stacey Jones. Yeah. So that would help out. And Stacey now being the, the Kiwi coach, but, um, yeah, the Warriors, the Warriors are on the up and up and up and up. So do you think that next year when they've got James Fisher-Harris and they've got uh, the, the players, because they, they obviously went f far last year, they're probably going to be up there this year. Do you they'll, think they'll that are, year. They, are they premiership yes, contenders this and next year? So the next one, they've signed uh, James. The next one they have to get to is Sean. Mm. And so look, 
you got that big unit in front of you next year, no one's going to get a hand on you. Mm. You've got to play. Mm. You've got to play next year. Sean, if you're watching, I know he's a big fan. Sean, keep playing. We, we can't, need you yeah. to keep playing. You can't imagine he'd leave Sean, or give it away. He's well, you don't know what's going on. He's been played. He's played so much footy. Um, and it gets to a stage sometimes where you're just sick of getting smashed. Mm. Um, but please, Sean, keep playing. We go. need you to keep playing. Danica said she'll pay half of your wage from her <laughs> wage, which is about 1.5 million. <laughs> That's half. Do the math. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Joey Manu, uh, heading off to yeah. Japanese rugby. This was in the works for a few mm. weeks. We've been speaking about it, but um, it got finalised. Do you think that we'll ever see him back in the NRL again? No, I don't think we will. Really? Come on, Joey. Oh, late twenties, yeah. I'd imagine that the All Blacks be watching this really closely. Yep. Um, similar, similar skill set to, to Sonny when Sonny Bill changed over, and Sonny pretty much his skill set changed certain ways they play with his one arm offloads. And Joey Mann is that sort of player, so. I'd say the All Blacks be watching very closely. Because there are, aren't there, there are certain rules with the All Blacks. Um, you can only have a f- number of players from overseas. from overseas playing in overseas clubs. No but idea. Yeah. Absolutely um, no idea. Mm. So you know ha- Australia had a rule there for a while. That yeah. The, I think they changed it. Yeah, the I wonder whether the... Or something. Um, yeah, that's the interesting one. He'll kill it. He's such a good Mm. It must be so strong. But the thing is, you, you look at the, the cash that Japanese rugby mm. has, huge. Mm. The season's shortened. Wouldn't it's, train as hard. Yeah, not and, as taxing and, on the body. And, and you're not coming up against, it's, it's not as brutal. Yeah. So. Are you bagging Japanese rugby? No, I'm saying that you've actually got a longer <laughs> career this life. This show is big in Japan. <laughs> you've got a long yes, career yeah, life. Yeah, totally, but totally. But you, twelve but you, games a year, fourteen games. I know, a year. but you're missing the NRL. Do you think there's a part that would just go? Well, he's proven everything. He's won premierships. He's won golden boots. Best player of the year, uh, best player in the world. Uh, he might be looking for a new challenge, and also to set himself up. I think he's got a young family. Has mm. he? Has he got young kids or something? But I think the the carrot to play for the All Blacks, like any Kiwi boy growing up, you know, the All Blacks is the absolute pinnacle. Mm. The absolute mm. pinnacle. So I wish him well. Yeah. Um, do you think he really wanted to play fullback at the Roosters? Do you think? I don't think he's that sort of player. Mm. I don't think he's that sort of player that go and knock on the coach's door and say, "Look, put me at fullback." Blah blah blah. Or I'm on one out. He just is a sort of player. He seems a team first guy. He seems a player, a, a, a person of high integrity and morals. And I think it's team first for him. Um, anywhere else, he'd be playing fullback, but. He's got James Tedesco there, he's mm. a superstar, legend of the game. Um, it's sad to see him go. A mm. player of that calibre mm. leaving the league. Yeah, very sad. It's, yeah, it's not great news for... There's always someone else coming through. That There's is always it. Someone else, There's always very sad. someone he's younger and... Great play. It's, it's, um, it's an interesting one for the Roosters because... How does that affect their Well, nowadays the wingers are like extra front rowers. Have a look at Penrith with Taruva and Toto, the way they get the sets rolling. They're losing Tupa. Well, he's coming to the end. I, I don't know if he's re-signed for next year, but he's coming to the end. Joseph Suwali, he's going to the dark side, going to rugby. Joseph Manu's gone. So I think there's some players off contract this year. I think Katoni Staggs may yep. be coming off contract. Selwyn Cobbo is another one. So Jared... He's going to be finishing up. So you're losing some real grunt there in the middle of the four pack with Jared. And then your, your wingers and your outside backs, so you get the sets rolling. So I don't really know what's coming through there at, at the Roosters as in outside backs, but they'll be going to market with a lot of money. Mm. A lot, a lot mm. of money. So you, you might just, they might be having, they might have a war chest of two and a half million. Mm. So I think Suwali, you would have been, you know, Jared Vion, Manu. Yeah, you look at maybe, yeah, a lot definitely of cash have a $2 million. Once again, 
It's your petty cash. <laughs> half of your wage. If, if that's half of mine, I'd love to know yours. <laughs> um, well, they think I'm the elephant man. They're feeding me peanuts. <laughs> um, all right, six weeks through the competition. Yeah. Who are some teams that you see flying under the radar at the moment? Well, no one's under the radar because there's so many shows on TV and so many radio shows talking about the soap. <laughs> the soap opera of rugby league just gets bigger and bigger. If I had to tip... Two, if I had to say two, number one would be the Raiders. They're, uh, geez, they're playing well. Their young players are playing well. They look a real happy team. Um, and we can, everyone can see they're going well, but just being down there in the ACT down there in Canberra, they, they don't get the attention that the high-profile clubs do. I've got to say Manly too. We all know Manly's going well, but I, I think they're a genuine threat. Mm. If everything, they need everything to go their way. And for everyone to be fully fit, but um, yeah, they're they're a real danger. Can yeah. you can you tell uh, this early on in the in the comp from an outside perspective, not internally a, as a team? But can you tell uh, the, right this team's going to absolutely go? Yeah. Or can it can it change at the the drop of an injury, well, the drop of you know? Have a, th- have a think over the an last drama. say twenty odd years. There's only sort of been one club which was the West Tigers in 2005, who came from nowhere to win the comp. We saw Parramatta when Hayne went on that run. Mm. But what about even last run. last year, South? Last year, S- South, South were, fell off. Yeah. The, Newcastle went like that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, there's only been one, really, that's exploded the last mm. three or four months, or halfway through the season, and gone on to win it. Mm. Um, you know, the Sharks, when they won it, that. I think they won 15 in a row at mm. one stage. They had no injuries. So, um, yeah, I, other than the teams we're talking about now, it's hard to see a team who is one from five or, you know, two from four, two from five, whatever, going on a big run and winning the comp. What about when you're a player and you're at what point of the year do you know, hang on, we're actually a really good chance of taking Pre-season this out. Sometimes. Yeah. And you're looking around and everyone's training hard and you're looking at the team, you go, geez, we've got depth, we've got young talent coming through, we've got the perfect mix. Um, but then you you need so much luck. I would think back in the, the late 90s or the 90s and the early 2000s, we had teams that could have won cops, but players get injured towards the the end of the year I think mm. I missed two or three semi-finals broke my back did my neck knee you just need all that luck you need so much luck towards the end of the year and having your best team on the field but around now you'd be knowing if, if you're mm. a genuine chance mm. yeah. as I said there's only been one team I can think of in the last 20 odd years was the That's Tigers I think they caught fire about round 14 or 15 and then just went boom. Mm. Parramatta did under Hayne, but then they got beaten in the grand final by the storm. Newcastle last year caught fire, but... Went down to so New hard. Zealand, it yeah. Sustain it for, for so long. Um, all right, well, earlier this week, it was officially 50 days to go until State of Origin. Mm. How are you feeling? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, not thinking about it yet. No? No. Um, all right, if you're Madge, what, yeah. po- what position is causing you more of a worry at the moment? 5'8". Yeah? Well, if Nathan's fit, you know, Nathan's going to be there. Um, Who yeah. would you have alongside him? Well, I'm a huge Cody Walker fan. If we go back last year in Game 3, he was the difference. He got me in the match. He laid on three tries. Mm. Cody's a magician. But he has to, he has to start showing showing Madge and the selectors or Madge that you know he's ready to go but I'm biased there I, I, I love Cody as a player so I've, I've put five players down and I've ranked them uh, Mitchell Moses yep. number one if he comes back he needs to have a couple of runs under his belt for Origin and I think he's about a month off what was so he, he might have yeah, round, round 12 games. I yeah. think he was he might have due. a couple of games if he's fit and firing Moses Number two, I've got Cody. Number three, just behind Cody, is Jerome, Luai. And then you got, there's talk of Jack Whiten coming out of retirement. And I'm, I know Madge is a big fan. And then, yeah, tied in that fourth position, I've got Jack Whiten and Nico. 
Um, does does the form at obviously South is struggling for form at the mm. moment? Does the form of South impact Depends Cody's chances? Depends how he's playing. Mm. If you can see real effort areas, and you can see that, you know, he's he's doing everything he can to lift his team. I'd pick him for sure. Yeah. But he needs to start showing that. Um, Jerome's got the combination. Mitchell Moses, he's you know he's an elite player. Um, so I think it'll come out of them. Those three players, Moses, Cody and Luan. What about earlier in the week? Um, sorry, the, the other position is dummy half. The dummy half yeah. is another big one. And there's three there. Robson, Appy and Wade Egan. I've always thought that Origin is so hard, especially in the middle of the field. So no no Cook? No. No, I think Cook, he's, he's come to the end, unfortunately. Um, well, he's in New South Wales Cup at the moment. Mm. Um, I always thought that, that Hooker is such a tough position that you need two. And once again, I'm, I've said it to him blue in the face, the best origin teams I've ever played with were Badiris and Wing, the yin and the yang. So if I was, if I was picking the team tomorrow, I, I would start with um, Reese Robson, really rugged. Um, you play however long, 30, 35 minutes or so, then you bring on either Appy or Wade Egan, and then Robson could go back on as a, a lock or you put him on in the middle, he's that rugged and tough. So who gets, so the, who gets the pick over, Appy or Wade Egan? Geez, that's a tough one. Well, Appy's been there before, which is a huge one for him. Um, geez, but it's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to go past Wade Egan at the moment, he's form. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'd have to sit on that mm, one. Okay. Maybe, um, maybe Wade Egan. I'd, I'd, I really don't know. But I'd be going Robson to start and one of the Abby or Wade on the bench. Um, I think we're going to be talking a fair bit of origin in the, in the coming weeks on immortal yeah. behaviour. I've got that many questions. I want to... Yeah. I wanna, sh should I ask you now? Dylan Edwards. Yes. So Ivan Cleary said during the week um, that he wants to see Dylan Edwards in the team somewhere. Mm. He's like, you know, he's, he's playing for Where the Kangaroos. You can't put him in front. If, if Turbo or Teddy are rock hard fit, mm. injury free, no one goes past them. Mm. No one. Uh, well, that's an interesting one. Whether you go Teddy or whether you go Turbo. Turbo's form at the moment. He's, his hamstrings look all right. His body's holding up. So, geez, that, that's going to be a big decision. The, the way to include both of them, obviously, we've seen before. Do you put, yeah. Well, Turbo's that good a player. You put him in the centres. Um, but that's a big decision. Whether you go turbo or Teddy, look, you, you can't put Dylan Evans in front of that. Mm, no. You can't put. And my wingers want to be Tao, without a doubt. And my other winger will be Joseph Suwalihi. Really? Gets the sets rolling forward. Really strong play too, coming out of trouble. Tall, really good in the air. Um, so that'd be my wingers. Unfortunately, I can't find a place for Dylan Edwards. Mm. Can't find a place. Well, you can't put him in front. They're once in a... Maybe once. Yeah, not, not at once full... Because Ivan was, Ivan was saying not necessarily at fullback. He's like, yeah. you just got to find a spot for no. him in the team. Well, maybe he could play in 14. He could come on and play dummy half. But they're, they're not once in a generation player. They're once in a, a lifetime. lifetime. Turbo and Teddy. So um, if I had to nail them down now... If I had to pick my team tomorrow, it would be in the spine. It would be Robson, Hooker, Cody, 5'8", Nathan and Teddy at fullback. Not a bad spine. It's a pretty good spine. Up against Harry, DCE, Munster, Reese Walsh, Kalen, Ben Hart. Well, that's actually, you know what, let's talk about Queensland uh, next week. What because is, what do you, how do you be, fit? It's shaving up. How do you fit, you know, Kalen, Hunt? Lost thought yeah. about it, as, as you'd imagine. Should we give them a teaser for next so week? I or would, <laughs> if I had to pick my spine... For Queensland? For DCE, obviously, yep. captain. Yep. Harry, Munster. Munster. Depend, depending on their groin, but Munster's going to be there. And I would go... Uh, well, I'd probably... I think they'd go Reese Walsh. Yep. And then what they'd do, they'd pick Kalen on the bench. Kalen will come on at 5'8". Munster will go to lock. And just and have Harry play, Harry will play the eighty. Yeah. Ben Hunt. Well, unfortunately, if you're going to carry Kalen on the bench, you, you can't have. So you'd you'd prefer to have 
Kaylin well, who Harry can, can play 80. Harry's yeah. one of those players. Yeah. But then you've got so Kaylin can obviously cover he can cover um, fullback, he can cover halves, Anywhere. but then you've got Hunt who can cover Well if anything happens in Well you, you don't carry an extra half on the bench. Mm. Uh, Kaylin can play anywhere. He, I think he came on and played in the middle in an origin. He can play 5-8 without a doubt. But please don't run at him, you South Park. <laughs> he could play anywhere. He's that good a play. Far out. I've been watching him this year close. Mm. Please don't get hurt. If he gets hurt, Newcastle are in all sorts. <laughs> I mean, we saw last week how tough he is. Yeah. Playing with that hip pointer. I understand yep. after the game and the painkiller wore off, he could hardly walk. Mm. I think we spoke about the Sunday footy show. Yeah, yeah. He could hardly walk. So, once again, it's uh, Origin. What are we, 50 days out, and we're already Less than, teams. less than 50 yeah. days. Um, yeah, poor Kalen last week. That was a nasty injury. I could so feel your, your stress through the, through the TV. I was having a nervous break. <laughs> when he kicked off and grabbed his groin, I was like, oh, no. Did you? Because you could see without Kalen in the team, Newcastle are very, very one Yes. Yeah. Did you see what he said at the end of the game? <laughs> yes, I saw it. <laughs> it merely tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Immortal Behaviour. We're going to be talking so much next week, and I'm sure we're going to be talking plenty more Origin as well. So uh, enjoy the footy over the weekend, and we'll see you again next week. This year, NRL on 9 is your one stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights, action, seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast, get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Young. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL Online and get all your entertainment there.